Do you ever find yourself feeling unsure of what game to play? Are you constantly scrolling through your library in Steam, only to hate everything you've ever downloaded? Perhaps you've looked at the Steam Store, only to find that you can't afford the HTC Vive, or that you've waited too long to figure out what the hell Vermintide 2 is? Do you ever find yourself starting a new game, only to remember that you'd rather have someone uppercut your beer gut instead of play through the beginning yet again? Gamer fatigue. It's a real problem. You might be thinking, what can I do to appease my boredom? Will this agony ever end? Will I ever enjoy another video game in my life? Does anybody actually like me? Really? Does anybody? In the world of gaming today, we have plenty of games that can appeal to the stimulation that our brain desires. But with complex puzzle games, shooters, RPGs, and whatever the hell this is, sometimes our senses are just overloaded. Do you ever feel like you need to just mindlessly press some buttons in a non-competitive way? If you related to any of these statements, well let me introduce you to my pal, Stephen Hawking, skateboarding extraordinaire. All right, that's enough of that before I get a copyright notice. Ugh. Back in the day, when you wanted to play some mindless shit in video games, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater was the game to play. Skateboarding games were revolutionary for their time, and that time was the year 1999. It's summer vacation, and your buddy just picked up the Blink-182 Enema of the State album. You're jamming out to What's My Age Again as you slurp down your Kool-Aid jammers when your friend Jimmy says, Hey man, wanna go play some Tony Hawk Pro Skater on my N64? Fuck yeah I do, Jimmy! And the next thing you know, you're drinking Mountain Dews until 3 a.m. Growing up in the 90s with two older brothers who used to skate all day long meant I was trying to keep up and skateboard with them a lot. And I was failing. You see, for a six-year-old, skateboarding's not the easiest fucking thing to do in the world. But none of that really mattered. Because if I couldn't hit some sick shit on the half pipe my next door neighbor built in his backyard, I could absolutely destroy and pro skater later that night. In an era of baggy shorts, Blink-182, and plenty of kids breaking their bones, Tony Hawk began his reign in both the skate realm and the video game realm. Tony Hawk blessed us with the beautiful combination of video games and extreme sports. And boy, was it fucking awesome. Not only did Pro Skater provide hours of fun skating in schools, shopping malls, and Area 51, it also had a banger of a soundtrack. Which I'm not really allowed to play right here due to copyright. Uh... If this menu doesn't take you back to the good old days... What were you doing with your life? Ripping through a school courtyard as Bob Bernquist, trying to get the high score of 27,000 points so you could get that last tape to unlock the next level? Man, was that a fucking blast. And if you ever got tired of doing time trials and just trying to unlock tapes, you could also hit free skate and just mindlessly press buttons until it was your little baby bedtime. What made these games great was a variety of things. Nailing combos, exploring different tricks, and unlocking new characters and gear. Like, there was tons of stuff that was just fun to do and you didn't really have to think much about doing it. You didn't have the stress of trying to beat a boss or get some health packs or find some more ammunition. Instead, the game said, hey, here's four buttons you need to press and uh, you were good to go. And honestly, the simplicity of these games probably drove it to the success that it received. Because you really didn't need to have been playing video games for 10 years to know how to play the game, it made it really easy to just pick up and play, which I think is incredibly important for some video games. While complexity and learning to master a game such as Dark Souls has its own charm to it, those games are meant to challenge you to persevere and be better. 
Whereas games like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater or SSX Tricky were meant to just have fun and then challenge yourself if you felt like it. I want to discuss SSX Tricky for a little bit because this was probably my favorite game from age 8 to 12. Tricky took the pro skater mechanics and added it to a snowboarding scene, which I thought was amazing, especially growing up in the winters of Michigan. There's something to be said for starting around in SSX and hearing this guy go, Ladies and gentlemen, this is Crozel. You're welcome to Garibaldi Beach. Also, this classic line from Run DMC. Your boost is maxed out recited by virtually anybody in my generation, mostly because of this game. Now, SSX improved upon Pro Skater by adding things like more characters or unique characters. You look like you need protection, you nambit pambit scissor freak jumping boot wimp. A tricky meter, hidden paths, incentives to unlock more decks, wild and crazy maps with crowds that sounded like cheering monkeys. Perfect! cutscenes at the end of a race that just kind of made you smile. Yeah! But really, the best part of this game was doing this to your friends. Cool. Welcome to the Man, fucking over your friend and getting a tricky meter at the start of the race really brings back some solid memories. Now, I really thought life couldn't get any better than this, because Tony Hawk Pro Skater and SSX Tricky, like, that, that was some really cool shit. And then, as if the video game gods were answering my prayers, this game came out. Tony Hawk's Underground. Man. This fucking game. It was everything I ever wanted in a skating video game. You could make your own guy, you could customize your own board, you could create your own park for your friends to play. Throughout the story, you meet all your skate heroes, and then at the end of the day, you could show that punk bitch Eric that you're just a better skater than him. Underground really introduced a whole new era of skating video games that kept the genre alive for some years to come. The influences of Underground really took hold in games like Skate, which was relatively successful, but then something weird happened. It was as if a million extreme sport games were silenced all at once. Extreme sport games like Tony Hawk, Skate, and SSX, they just, just disappeared. And it kind of felt like nobody had noticed. These games all disappeared when great games like Skyrim, The Witcher, Battlefield, Call of Duty, and so much more had started to drown out the video game industry. You know, skating games just weren't holding the limelight like they used to. And it wasn't until about a year or two ago that I got a hankering to play some skate games or snowboarding games when I realized that there weren't any to be found. In 2012, a new SSX game was released by EA, and that sort of captured the feeling of the old games, but it got a little more serious and had different challenges and customizables and what have you. Uh, it essentially went through a modern day EA facelift. You probably shouldn't laugh anymore. Overall, these games just stopped being developed, which you know is a damn shame because whenever I was bored with the rest of my video games, I could just pop in a simple skating or snowboarding game and waste hours as I was dealing with some other shit. Now admittedly, I had never played through the skate games before. I wanted to give them a go recently, but when I looked up skate games to play, I couldn't play any of them on PC. I no longer had my Xbox at the time because I was more into PC gaming and I just wasn't that into emulating so I couldn't really get my hands on any of the games. There really was just no way to play a skating or snowboarding game on PC anymore. Now before you guys get all up in my ass about this, I know that Steep is out, which is okay, 
but I feel like the controls are a little wonky and you can't ever seem to get a ridiculously big air like you could in other games and by that I mean without getting too much g-force or some shit and really at the end of the day I just don't want a realistic snowboarding or skating game I want a ridiculously fun and wacky one which is what those old games are when I looked up on Steam to see if there were some skating games, there were early access ones and some chicken looking one. That actually looks kind of cool. But nothing like the old days, nothing like old skating games or SSX or anything like that. And it sucks because I think the gaming community desperately needs a game like that nowadays. There's really something to be said for skating around a city or going through some weird Japanese snow dream in SSX. In all the advancements that video games have gone through in the past couple years, one thing that they have sorely missed is adding ridiculousness to games now. So many developers are focused on realism that jumping a police helicopter is probably the fun that some people want to play. In conclusion, I just want to say that I miss skate games, and if there are any developers watching this, please, for the love of God, make a new skate or snowboard game. We need it. The world is in dire need of some more extreme sport games.